Well, good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome to, to worship outside. Um, we turned the air conditioning on, so hopefully it will cool down uh, before long. Uh, it's a little warm today, but thank you for uh, braving the heat to, to come out and to worship in our service that we call the Vine. My name's Paul. I'm one of the preachers here. This is Jennifer, another one of the preachers, and she has a couple of announcements before our church comes. I sure do. Um, I want to just remind everyone that today, after the 11 o'clock service in the Christian Life Center, Kate Bridges is hosting the Rise Against Hunger event. Thank you all to who supported her um, financially for that event and also who have signed up to volunteer. But I know that if you show up, they will give you a hairnet and some gloves and you can help participate. So I think Kate's in the back. Take back video. She's raising her hand. Um, and so a big thank you for your support of Kate and that ministry. That's a, a great thing that she has organized. Um, also, I want to remind everyone that on Thursday, the um, church office is closed for the 4th of July. Um, and then I want to say a big thank you to Margaret Wanamaker, who um, covered for us last week while we were at annual conference. It's great to be at annual conference um, and be part of the connection with all the other preachers, but we do miss being here. And so thank you to Margaret. Um, and then the good news, I guess for us, I don't know you can decide if it's good news for you, but on Sunday morning at closing worship, um, the bishop officially sets the appointments. So you are officially stuck with Pastor Paul and myself um, for the next year. I understand uh, once upon a time they used to go to annual conference and it was at that service that they would actually find out where they were moving. Um, so you wouldn't find out until that day. So preachers would run to pay phones or try to get home as fast as they could to tell their families where they would be moving. So I'm thankful that's not how it works anymore. Um, but we are glad to be here together. Um, on your bulletin, you have lots of information. Um, you also have a tear-off sheet there on the side of your bulletin. We'd love to know if you're visiting with us or if any of your information has changed. You can place that in one of the offering uh, boxes during the offering time. There's also a song sheet. Um, the band loves for you to sing along with them, and so you can um, follow along the song sheet that is there. But we are thankful to be out in this space on this beautiful day worshiping together. So, Again, thank you for being here. If you, would, if you don't mind, you can stand up and just look at somebody and wave. You can shake their hand if you want to, but just say, hey, I'm glad that you're here.
from the center. too much. Sick, right? Have you ever been somewhere where someone else is eating ice cream and you get none? I have too much of things. Do you have too much of things? Probably yeah, I like, I like so much fruit and vegetables that I eat all my fruit and vegetables. Oh, in one day. Wow. Are you done forever? Okay, so that's it. Okay, good. So you're somewhere and someone's eating ice cream. Right next to you. How do you feel? Jealous. Jealous, yes. Yes. Now, I don't expect that person to share their ice cream code because that'd be kind of gross. But it's good when we all have something, right? So I have water. You guys don't. Okay. So here is us. We're the people, right? Can you hold this? This could go bad, I don't know. Right. Thanks, Oliver. I look, so I got, I have, I have water and you don't. And this is you, you're the people. I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna share it with you, oh! Oh no! Oh, no, it's not working. Oops. So, God gave you love, what happened to it? It, it didn't work, did it? Well, what if there were other people? So there's other people that you're supposed to give the love to, right? And you're supposed to share your stuff, especially if you have too much. Because if we keep it all to ourselves, we waste it, right? Yeah. So we're supposed to share it with everybody, right? And then everybody gets some, and then you get some too, right? All right, so don't share your ice cream if it's on a cone, because it's gross. But share <laughs> what you have, okay? Right? That is gross. So, but share what you have, because God gave you a lot sometimes, and you should share, right? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all you've given us. We pray that you help us share it with others, Lord, and not just keep it to ourselves. And Lord, we know that's what we're called to do, and we pray that you help us remember that every day. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, that way. Okay. Do you want to come? Thank you, Miss Heather, um, and thank you, parents, for having your children here today. And um, as we come into our time of prayer, I always like to start with what joys um, do we have? What joys that you want to share with your church family? Any joys? Evan had a good week at engineering camp. Evan had a good week at engineering camp. Good job. That's awesome. We're happy for you, Evan. Yes, Jonathan. Our daughter Allison leads Saturday for Costa Rica for study abroad. Very good. Yeah, daughter Allison. So we'll be in prayer for Allison as well. That's exciting. Kathy Fisher. Oh, Kathy Fisher. So, 
Yeah, so Jack Fisher um, had a great week at the Citadel at Leadership um, Camp there. So if you see Jack around, um, tell him congratulations because I think he just had a great time and they saw some wonderful leadership qualities in Jack. So congratulations to Jack. Other joys? Cool. Cool. Yeah, if you see all the blue shirts, um, the volunteers, thank you so much. I'm impressed you're here today after being up. Um, the kids showed up Wednesday morning and they left yesterday at noon. Um, we have a lot of youth here with their shirts on. Um, they did a lot of great work in the community for some of our shut-ins um, and also with some of the organi organizations in the community that serve others. And so um, I want to thank um, Savannah and Heather and Deanna and then all of the adults that helped um, for their leadership. They built a ramp and they just did a lot of really great work. Um, I think Pastor Paul is going to mention a little bit about that in his sermon as well. And so um, it is a joy to have them give their time and they could do anything they want in the summertime. They chose to be here and to serve others. And so that's a special thing. Um, another joy, um, I think for the office maybe, Paul's going to be gone for like three weeks. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I, I maybe worded that wrong. Yeah, yeah. Paul, gets, Paul and Jamie get to take some well-needed um, and well-deserved time off, and so um, we're happy for them. I think they're going to spend some time at the beach and um, do some stuff, and so um, tell him to have a great time today. So we'll try to keep the place upright while you're gone. How about that? The office is going to be happy. Well, it's quieter when you're not there. <laughs> So um, that is a joy. Um, there's a rosebud on the altar for Cornelia Steele. She will be 94 on um, the 4th of July. And so a big happy birthday to Cornelia. Um, as we pray for those that we've been given the names for, if you have others, please feel free to add them to this tear-off sheet. Um, and you can put them in the offering um, boxes up here. Or there's a QR code on there if you would rather just enter them online. But those names that we have been given include Mona Sanders, Lee Bransford, Ann Bullock, who is Amy Crawford's mother. We continue to pray for Lisa Reese. Um, and now we add Max Reese to that list. He spent some time um, in the hospital this last week. We continue to pray for Aiden Cox and for Kim McLaughlin, that is Greg's wife, Scott Anderson, Sarah Jane Mann, Amanda Twitchell. We continue to pray for Steve Hedrick um, and Charlene and Alan told us this morning that he also got some good news um, as he battles cancer this week, but we do continue to pray for him. Um, Bob Loffenberger, that is Greg's dad. We um, lift Nico Rao in prayer. She is in the hospital this week. Um, Alice McMillan fell and broke her shoulder. Um, and then we hold Ben, who is a friend of Daniel's, in prayer this week, as well as Janine Reeves and Betty Hudson. So as we go in into prayer this morning, I simply invite us to maybe listen to the sounds of nature around us and um, try to clear our minds the best we can and center ourselves for prayer. And then we'll have a spoken prayer and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Yes. Fawn Smith. Yes. Thank you. I've got a pen over here. Thank you so much, April. Let us go to God in prayer. Good and gracious God, we're so thankful for your presence, the presence that we can hear and feel even in our midst out in this beautiful space. God, we are thankful that you can see deeper into our hearts than what we typically reveal. We are thankful for the beauty that lives there by the power of your Holy Spirit. And so I would ask that you would help each of us to realize that beauty. Whatever we are thinking in our minds, whatever might be bogging us down in this moment, whatever we are holding in our hands that keep us from filling our hands with your comfort and sharing that comfort with those that we need. God, we ask that you would search those, those places, our hearts, our hands, and our minds. Help us to clear the clutter. Help us to empty them so we can hold all that you are offering 
empower us, give us the courage. Teach us to rid ourselves of the unnecessary things that we hang on to. Help us to offer the same affection and generosity with which you welcome each of us. God, in a world where division and war has become the answer to differences, where violence seems to be all around us and devastation no longer seems to cause our hearts to ache, we come to you in prayer when that's all we know we can do. In a world that focuses on being right rather than being humble and kind, God, we come to you in prayer when that's all we feel we can do. We come to you and we pray for our local leaders, our state and our national leaders, and God, we pray for our world leaders. And we even come and we pray for our church leaders here and across the globe. God, help us to find you once again in our hearts. Help each of them to find you once again in their hearts. Remind us, each of us, that you call us to be one. Help us to have a heart for all of humanity, all people. Help us to listen and respond in love, seeking oneness. Help us to be curious. Help us to keep our focus on you and not unjustified fear that we have placed on our differences. For God, we know that you are present in all things. So help us to hang on and to trust that truth. We come this day and we are thankful that you continue to claim us even when we fall short. We come this day and we long to feel that peace, that peace that surpasses all of our own understanding. And we long to be drawn closer to you. So in this time of worship, gracious God, help us to do just that. And we come this day and we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught each of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
for him. I believe that's the work of Jason Andrew Sunday. We have spent a lot of time in 2 Corinthians. You know, we just finished the, the Holy Spirit series, and um, this week we, we're going to end uh, in 2 Corinthians because during the month of July, it's going to be the month of Mark. We're going to look at stories of Jesus from the, the Gospel of Mark. Um, and so uh, we're going to end our reading in 2 Corinthians in the 8th chapter, if you brought your Bibles with you. The church was in a kerfuffle. Uh, in other words, it was all up in arms. It was up in roar. Um, and so Paul writes these words in the 8th chapter. Now as you excel in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge, in utmost eagerness and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year not only to do something, but even in your desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, or in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, to the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. My friends, the word of God for all of us is God's people. I ain't speak to God. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we pray this day that you simply remind us of who we are as the connection of your people. The connection we call the church, but more importantly, the connection that we have with one another and one with you. Remind us, O oh Lord, that we are to share out of our abundance so that no one is in need. And now, Lord, may the words of all our mouths and even the meditations of each one of our hearts, may they truly be acceptable in your sight. For you and you alone, Lord, you're our strength and you're our redeemer. Amen. It kind of began on the Gorge Road coming from Franklin, North Carolina. How many of you know where Franklin is? Franklin to Highlands. That's where the idea was kind of hatched. You see, we had heard, I was serving in Highlands then, we had heard that there was a, a new startup church, just a, a small membership church in a storefront, and they were going to feed the poor. They were going to feed the homeless, and they sent word out all around if anybody would come help, and Highlands is about 25 minutes from Franklin, or 20 minutes, and so we decided we'd cook. And our church would go down there, and we would feed these folks in Franklin. And so we took five or six of us, we cooked the meal, we drove it down there, we fed the folks that were there, 
Some were homeless. Some lived in their car. Some just didn't have funds for food. But all in all, it was about 20 people. We felt good about that, and they seemed to like our food, and it was on the way back up the gorge. Robbie and Jennifer and Jamie and I were riding up there in the car, and, and this idea was hatched. What if we did something like that in Highlands, North Carolina? Now, how many of you have ever been to Highlands? Highlands is an affluent community. Not many homeless folks there, but there are a lot of working poor there. And so we talked about it on the way, and being good United Methodists, we brought it up to the ministry team. And the ministry team, they had some questions like, who's going to pay for this meal? Where's the meal going to be? Are we as a church going to have to take care of it all the time? We said we don't know the answer to a lot of those questions, but we think it should be a community event. In fact, we're going to call it Community Table. Being good United Methodists, we formed another committee to study it for a month. So after we studied it, we decided we would do it. What we decided was Highlands Methodist Church, they would take care of it for two weeks. We would eat at the community building there in Highlands. We put word out all in the community and people came, about 50. And we fed them. And looking out at who was there, there were some millionaires there eating around the table. There were some widows there eating around the table. There were some folks who worked there who served the rich all of their lives who now were being served. And if you were to ask me, there would be those who would say that the table that we served in Franklin was a table of poverty. And the table that we served in Highlands was not about poverty, but I beg to differ. Because there's poverty everywhere. <clears throat> We always think it's about money. But all of us have poverty. Maybe we have poverty in relationships that we have. Maybe we have a poverty in our faith. Maybe we have a poverty of self-esteem or even self-control. We all suffer with poverty. And I think that's what Paul is talking to the church at Corinth about. You, you see, believe it or not, the church was highly divided. You, you had Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians, and both of them thought they were right. They forgot that they were based on Jesus Christ. You had those who had an abundance and those who had very little. It was divided in every way. And so Paul was writing to remind them. You see, we read this scripture and we think it's about money, abundance of money. Who, Jesus Christ, though he was rich, became poor, so that in his poverty you might become rich. This isn't prosperity gospel. You see, what Paul's talking about here is all of us have abundance of something. What about your time, your talents, your gifts, your service, your witness. We all have an abundance of something. We need to share that with those who have not. So there is a fair balance. I love those words that Paul said. Because believe it or not, aren't you glad that you came to church today to know you live in poverty? We all have some kind of poverty in our lives. Last week was annual conference, as Jennifer said, and Margaret was here preaching, and we're grateful for that. But annual conference, I wasn't sure how that was going to be. A third of our church is disaffiliated in the United Methodist Church. Didn't think many people would be there. Now, I am a child of this conference. 
My daddy was a pastor here. I told you, everybody's a pastor in my family. I've grown up going to Lake June, Alaska all of my life. This year was the most people I had seen at annual conference ever. Although we lost the third, there were more people there, and there was this spirit uh, of just of just being together and being the church like never before. You know, we talked about the Holy Spirit here for a month. I think it took up there at Lake Junaluska. Something was going on up there. The preaching, the teaching, the fellowship, everything was so good. One of my favorite worship services is on Saturday night, the, the service of ordination and commissioning. Because every year I remember when a bishop laid his hands on me. And so this year I, I sat in my robe and the only thing not working at conference in Stewart Auditorium was the air conditioning. It was hot. And I sat beside some guy, y'all may remember him, named Troy, Troy Howard. And so Troy and I, this worship service lasted an hour and 57 minutes. Not that I was counting that at all. The bishop gave a great sermon. Troy wrote me a note and he said, uh, the bishop could have stopped in the like five places but kept going. But it was a good sermon. The bishop mentioned about connection, about community. He said one of his dear friends grew up in the UK. He didn't come to the faith until late. He didn't come to the faith early in his, uh, in his life because he said, I can't worship a God I cannot see. But later, as the man lived life, he became very religious. The bishop asked him why. And he said, I could never see God, but I saw God in all kinds of people. I needed to be reminded of my connection. And the bishop said this, which I agree with. How many of you ever have ever heard somebody say, I can be religious and not go to church or be a part of a community? The bishop said, you cannot. You can think that you are, but you have to be connected. Because we're created and built for relationships. The bishop quoted a book called Bowling Alone. B-O-W-L-I-N-G. Bowling Alone. By Robert Putnam. He's a sociologist who's studying the decline of community in America. The premise is this. There are more people bowling today than ever before. Did you know that? Bowling. There are more people going to bowl than ever before. But there are less people joining bowling leagues. Because we conditioned ourselves that we're better off alone. What if our poverty is a connection to a community? I love that we had 18 youth here for last week, going out in the community offering love. Christians out offering love. That's what COOL stands for. And they went out to all kinds of places. They did all kinds of things. But if you ask them the most important thing that they did, they will tell you this. Getting connected with one another in every place that they were, they were invited in. You remember last Wednesday, the hottest day of the year? They were invited in after doing work. And they got to know the people that they were working with. It's about connection. It's about community. How do I know that? When I go visit somebody that's just had surgery or just experienced the death in their family, when I go visit them as one of their pastors, you know what we talk about? We talk about community. They'll say, so-and-so brought me a pound cake. Did you know Jesus was a pound cake? They'll say, so-and-so came over and they cut my grass. It's about community. 
So-and-so called me. Look at all of these notes of encouragement that I got. It's about community. All too often. We think we can do it on our own. We need to be connected. Connected to our community of faith. Paul said it this way. You know that even though our Lord Jesus Christ was rich, he became poor. So that in his poverty, you might be rich. Not talking about money there. Talking about connection. I'm going to be gone for a few weeks and evidently the office is going to be very happy about that. I want you to go by the office and just yell for three weeks. Just yell. Dana loves that. Debbie loves that. Jennifer loves that. Peyton. Peyton loves that. Savannah. Savannah will love that. Just go by. It's going to be so quiet. They're not going to know what to do. But you know what I'm going to miss in those three weeks? Is the sense of community. We have community when we're connected. Does that mean we agree with everything that goes on in our community? Absolutely not. But the connection through Christ is the most important connection that we have. Our grandchildren came up to conference last week because Zach, their daddy's a pastor, and Ella Ann, my six-year-old perfect granddaughter, wanted to go down to the playground. I said, come on, L.A., and I'll take you. And I walked out of the place where we stay off of County Road there, and you got to walk on County Road for a minute, and I just started walking, and Ella Ann goes, gee, Dad, wait. I said, what? I've got to hold your hand to keep you safe. We have to stay connected. I don't know where your poverty is. I only know that we can stay connected through Jesus Christ. Amen? One way we stayed connected to our community this last week is we've talked about um, are all the young people that went out. And I just thought the girls came back. Pastor Paul used the word kerfuffle in his sermon, and y'all missed it. <laughs> I think he did that just for you. Um, but we went out. These kids went out and served the community next Sunday, a week from today, we will welcome young people into this space for vacation Bible school. Woohoo! Woohoo! Woo there you go, that sounds better. Um, if you have not yet signed up to volunteer for vacation Bible school, I know Savannah would love for you to do that. And if you have not yet signed up your child, or if you have ch children in your neighborhood, or children that you know, it's never too late to sign up. And so Vacation Bible School begins next Sunday um, evening at 5 o'clock. And then in two weeks, and it's also in your um, bulletin, you can see that the youth are going to serve another community. They're going to go to Atlanta, to the Mission Camp M25, and they have items that they have been asked to collect. And so we're asking you bring these in. Um, for the youth to take with them to Atlanta, um, and that's on the 14th, I believe. And so, yes, Savannah is very, very busy, and so um, tell her thank you when you see her. She's doing a phenomenal job, and I'm thankful for all of you who have jumped in to um, help her. Savannah, raise your hand back there. She's, there she is. Um, so sign up to help with Vacation Bible School or sign your kids up. Um, but let's continue to find ways that we can be connected to one another. We thank you for the gifts that you give. Um, so we can do that with all the means that we have. And so thank you for who you are in ministry. All right, we're going to end with the song that we introduced last week when just Tyson and I were doing that sort of scaled down worship uh, song called Made for More. Um, so hopefully uh, maybe you, you've learned it a little bit. So join, uh, please stand and join us um, as we close worship with this song. And as you feel that, you can bring any tithes and offerings, um, any prayer slips, anything like that up front, and put them into the boxes up front.
together. And before I give a benediction, I'm going to ask some of you have met this person who for the last 108 years has been doing sound here at Perth. I'm going to ask Dakota to come up here, Dakota. Dakota um, has been doing sound here, seriously, the last couple of years. Yeah, two years. Um, but Dakota has decided uh, he needs to spend time with family a little bit more. He'll still be here playing. He's the one with the big fiddle that stands up for the bass. Call that bass. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, still be here on Bluegrass Sunday. But I want us to, to give uh, uh, Dakota uh, a big round of applause because for a couple of years, he kept on. Thank you, Dakota. And thank you for being here. Remember, Sunday school happens at 10 o'clock. If you need a Sunday school class, come see Jennifer. I don't know where anything meets. I just work here, okay? And evidently, people are going to be happy when I'm gone, okay? 
Thanks, Jennifer. Um, I look forward to seeing y'all in a few weeks. You're in good hands uh, while, I, while Jamie and I are away. But uh, thank you for the opportunity to be in ministry here. Go in God's grace and God's peace. And remember, you're not in poverty when you're in a connection, particularly that connection through Christ. Go in God's grace. Amen. Amen. One, two, three, four.